Here's a nice challenge for you. How many happy faces are there in this picture? Oh, by the way, you're not allowed to count them one by one, and your guess has to be an intelligent guess. You can't be like a bajillion or a million. It's got to be something relatively close. Now, I'm not interested again in exactly how many there are. I'm interested more in approximately how many there are. Okay, approximately just means something that's pretty close, an, an estimate, if you will. Now, you can stop the video right now if you'd like. You can use any strategy that you like. Write down approximately how many you think there are on a piece of paper and then compare your number with what I get at the end. All right, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to figure out approximately how many things there are in a picture using a very intelligent technique that all the experts use called estimating using reference. Okay, let's talk about reference here for a bit. What's a referent? Well, a referent is one group that you make. It's just one group. You make a circle around a group and in that referent there's got to be an amount that you are comfortable skip counting by. So let's see, what are you comfortable? You can count by fives, you know how to count by tens, twenties, twenty-fives, hundreds, thousands, okay? Pick one group, one referent, and put that many inside of it. Not all of them, just pick one of the numbers, five or ten or twenty or whatever, and make that your referent group. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to pick, now look, when you make your referent, don't make them in a straight line, okay? I mean, I mean you could, but it's just easier if you make your referent groups in a nice circle. Watch, let me show you. I like the number 10. I'm going to make a referent group of 10. I'm going to go 1, 2, looks like they got happy face. They got looks like they got noses, I mean. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to draw a circle around these 10. And I'm going to label it with the letter R. You know what that R stands for, right? It stands for referent. I know there's 10 in here, which means all I have to do now is draw circles that are the same size as my referent, and I can be pretty sure that there's going to be about 10 in all of them. Watch. Here's another circle. Would you say that these two circles are about the same size? Yep. Would you say that since they're about the same size? They should have about the same amount in them. Yep. So we're going to put 10 in there in both of them. Now, let look, you don't have to waste your time to double check that there's 10 because you won't always get 10. Let me show you. I got 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and a little bit, 10 and a half maybe. That's okay. Even if there was 12 or 13 or 9 or 8, it's not a big deal as long as there's a number that's close to 10. If you had 20 in there, that's a big problem. 20 isn't close to 10. That's, that's way off. But if there's relatively close, like 10 or 11 or whatever, that's good enough. I'm going to keep making circles now that are about the same size until I'm done my first row. Now, these circles are pretty close to each other. They're, they're about the same size. So I know there's going to be about 10 in all of them. So I'm going to write 10 and 10. Now I'm going to keep doing this until the entire page is covered up. I've already got one top row. I'm going to keep going. Now here's a common mistake that some people will make. They'll, they'll separate their circles. Not you. I know you won't do that. But you know some people, you know when they're starting out, this is what they'll do. See that big space in the middle? You know what the problem with that is? These guys are lonely. They need to be in a group. So put them in a group. Let the circles touch each other and then keep going and keep filling that out. Now here's another mistake that some people do when they're starting out. They'll overlap the circles like this. Okay? Don't overlap the circles because that means you're counting the same circles twice. You're counting the same happy faces twice. You don't want to do that. Just let them touch like that. Now if they overlap a little bit like that, you know, that, that's okay, but don't make it really major. Now, I know I said you got to put them in a group. These guys here, are, this guy here is lonely. That's okay. You're always going to have a couple lonely ones. Just don't make too many lonely ones. So let's circle that. Now, I'm almost done. I just have one more row to fill. 
And you can see this takes a little bit of time. But I'm going to show you a shortcut at the very end, an advanced technique, if you will, that's going to kind of help you get through this a little bit faster. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. So let's see how many exact, or about, not exactly, but about how many there are. Now we know there's 10 in here and 10 in there. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, right? 60. We got about 60 in the top row. And we've got about, here we got another 10, so that's 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Are you counting with me? I hope you're counting with me. 100, what are we at here? 130, wait, we got 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220? Say about 220. Now look, look what you wrote down on your paper. Uh, oops, I, I messed that up. 220. Now look what you wrote down. Do you have something close to 200? Maybe 180, maybe 190, 200, 230 maybe? Those are all good guesses. All right, you should give yourself a pat on the back if you got something close to mine. Okay, that's pretty impressive. Um, but you might not get exactly 220 because remember, we're just estimating. Now, if you understand this, I'm going to show you a little bit of a faster method of getting the same answer. Okay, let me erase all of these. Now, the first step, remember when we made our first top row, we had 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Here's what you could have done. In your mind, you could have said, hey, I know I've got 60 in my top row and 60 is close to 50. Now why would I do that? Why would I say 60 is close to 50? Because most of you know how to count by 50s, including myself. But do you know how to count by 60s? No. Maybe that's a little bit harder. Some of you might. But we could say the top row is about 50. And once you've got that, if you make another row below it, that's about the same size of oval as the top one, you could say, hey, look, this 50 in here, this is going to be about 50 in here. And if I keep doing that, something about the same size, about 50 in there too. Well, look at that. I've got one more to go, about 50 here. Now, if now this is only for people who maybe are, are a little bit more advanced, who can count by 50s, who understand what I'm doing. If you can just do this, now you can just count by 50, 100, 150, 200. And that way you're not drawing little circles all over the place and spending a lot of time doing that. Now, Mr. Melham, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You said in your first guess there was 220. And now when you count by 50s, there's only about 200. What's the deal with that, Mr. Melham? Well, let me tell you something. 200 is close to 220. They're both good guesses. Neither one is necessarily better. It's about getting an approximate guess, something that's relatively close. And they're both good guesses. All right, guys. So like always, keep practicing. I thank you very much for watching this video. Have a good day and farewell.